This is the third and final part of a presentation made at the annual stakeholders meeting by the Dennis Hurley Centre Director, Raymond Perrier, in February 2019. We continue to look at our work through the beautiful words of the Magnificat, Mary's vision of the world. She tells us that God will lift up the humble. And of all the humble people we encounter, perhaps people with disabilities are among the most neglected and invisible in our society. In 2018, at the Dennis Hurley Center, in partnership with ICANN and Kulisani, disabled people have become visible, have become productive, and most importantly, get paid for what they do. Our blind tour guide, Tembi, has become famous and a real draw to the center as people are fascinated to hear him tell stories and to see how competently and professionally he can navigate his way around the building. We have other people with disabilities, with cerebral palsy and with learning difficulties working around the building and most visibly are deaf young students who are working in St Augustine's Cafe. The cafe was finally completed last year thanks to generous support from the Irish ambassador and also alumni from St Augustine's and donors from restaurants who gave us much of the equipment. The deaf young adults who've been trained in catering and business skills are now running the cafe, which is open from Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and used very often here by Will Carter, who with his wife Laura came and volunteered from the UK for several weeks in 2018. Some sadness in the cafe is that one of the members of the group, Nomfundu Ntuli, passed away during the course of the year. She and the other 2018 students will always be remembered in the cafe because it's their faces and image, which are images which are immortalized in the signage which shows people how to order different things in South African sign language. It's not only in the cafe that we feed people, but also, of course, in Nkosinati. God has filled the hungry with good things. The Nkosinati feeding program is at the center of what we do because it means that every day we provide a place of welcome and of comfort. Our annual meal of reconciliation is the biggest version of that, where we're feeding people right the way through the building, not just homeless people, but other members of the public who come and join us to share a meal on the day of reconciliation. And it's a good way of remembering a principle that we apply to our feeding program all through the year, that we only ever serve food that we would eat ourselves. Again, it's not just about numbers, but the numbers are quite astonishing. We serve food five days a week through the year, including public holidays. On average, we were serving over 400 meals each day, up 18% on the previous year. That means a total of 46,000 breakfasts, 56,000 lunches, more than 100,000 meals in total. And because we get such wonderful donations of food and ingredients, we spend almost no cash on the meals. In fact, only 12 cents for each meal that we, that we served. But of course, we do have a large bill for Nkosinati because of utilities, cleaning, maintenance, and supervision staff. The number of showers used went up uh, significantly, up 25% for the men using showers and over 50% for the women using showers. And we also distributed clean clothes to 1,700 people. Most of this work was done by volunteers. During the course of the year, we had over 2,000 volunteering sessions a fifth of them by homeless people themselves. And that equates to about 130,000 rand of manpower during the course of the year. But we don't just fill people with food, we also inspire them with the arts. And the presence of Musa Tlachwayo and his dancers in the Gandhi Latuli Hall means that as people are waiting to see the social worker or to see the doctor, they're able to enjoy the beautiful dance works that are being created here. None of this work would be possible without our amazing volunteers, from faith groups and different parishes, from schools, universities, corporates, families coming in, and overseas visitors. Mary goes on to say that God has sent the rich away empty. And I suppose it's true that our rich volunteers don't get fed, so their stomachs might be empty. But we hope they do leave full, full with memories and full with inspiration. 
It's particularly interesting to note the impact on corporate volunteers who come in. This group from City Lodge Hotels, one of many corporate organizations who came in as teams to serve the poor, to get to know our part of the city, and to be transformed themselves. In fact, all who come to our precinct, such as this group who came on a beset Durban walking tour, are transformed when they see what happens here and feel the life of this part of the city. We even managed to persuade some people to come after dark when we hosted the International Symposium on Electronic Art. We were able to project extraordinary images on the buildings around our center to challenge perceptions of the CBD. Mary tells us that God has come to the help of his servant. Well, God has certainly come to our help and we could not help God's people if God's people in turn did not help us with goods, with time, but most importantly, with money. We're spending between four and five million rand every year. And if you look at this chart, you can see the wide range of sources from which it comes. In 2018, about 23% from overseas and 77% from South Africa. But you'll also notice a decline in the funds raised in 2018 versus 2017. We're fortunate that we have set aside money in reserves to try and balance out some of the variations in funding. But it's important that we remain focused on funding and on fundraising activity. And that's one area where we need to do better. Our fundraising activities are fun and they're engaging, but they need to bring in more money. Two recent ones that went very well were Sipo Mataka, who ran the Mandela Marathon for us and will run the Comrades Marathon for us later this year, seen with Monsignor Paul Nadal, whose running days may now be over, but he has fond memories of running the Comrades and cycling the Cape Argus and walking the Camino Santo, all in, in aid of the Dennis Hurley Centre. And Leanne Banks, our administrator, seen here with two of her friends, recently swimming the Midmar Mile, again to raise money for the Dennis Hurley Centre. Our level of revenue may be going up and down, but our expenses inevitably go up from year to year. Half of our expenses, as you'd expect, are spent on staffing and the rest on all the things required to run a building. Utilities and cleaning and security and communications and various repairs and maintenance costs. And that indeed increased quite substantially in 2018, over 300,000 spent on repairs and maintenance. And if you look at the costs over our different projects, you see how they spread out. The clinic being the largest single focus of funding and then running the building. The other projects being less reliant on funding and more on volunteers. But also you'll notice that for 2019, we are pulling back on our budget, conscious that fundraising is getting harder. So we need to work, make sure that the money that we have works harder this year. But even at this level of four and a half million, we do need to raise over 12,000 Rand a day to keep our operations going in 2019. So part of that is to establish a stronger base of funding. Mary tells us that God remembers the promise of his mercy. So we want to set up a mutual promise. We want people to pledge to us that they will give to us, perhaps now or perhaps as a bequest in their wills, and we in turn will pledge that that money will be used forever because it will be used to fund an annuity that will keep providing resources to the Dennis Hurley Centre. We're doing this in, in honour of Paddy Carney. Paddy, in his will, left a substantial amount of money to the Dennis Hurley Centre to help us set up a legacy fund. So we will use that to kickstart this project and we hope that more pledges will soon follow. As Hurley Hurley's legacy was continued by Paddy Carney, then we at the Dennis Hurley Center now have the challenge to continue the joint legacy of Hurley and Paddy Carney. The Magnificat ends with the phrase, to Abraham and his children forever. And that's a chance to remember that we are all children of Abraham and central to Archbishop Hurley's life, to the Dennis Hurley Center, and indeed to the tradition of Durban is respect for people of all faiths. That's always been part of what we do. For example, our annual interfaith iftar, 
where we bring together Muslims and non-Muslims to jointly break the Ramadan fast. Here, second from the right, Janet Talbot, a dear friend of ours who passed away this year and whose husband, Stuart, runs our empowerment program. And in 2018, we also created a new interfaith link by hosting the extraordinary Buddhist sand mandala, during which over seven days, Tibetan monks laboriously worked to create an extraordinary image of heaven made out of colored sand, at the end of which the sand was swept away and cast into the sea. It was a great blessing. Many thanks to them for being partners and to all the partners who worked with us over the course of the year. So many different organizations, faith communities, arts partners, government partners, NGOs, media partners, educational partners, corporate partners, and overseas partners. We couldn't do what we do without the help of our partners and without the help of the many volunteers and the hard work of our staff who make the Dennis Hurley Center possible. And most of all, many thanks to the donors who support us and we hope will continue to support us for many years to come. Thank you.